Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Ji Chen from HKU uh, uh, Department of Civil Engineering. Uh, thank you for joining this uh, winning one distinguished lecture titled the Filtration Solutions to Mitigate the Coronavirus Aerosol and the PM2.5 Protons, to be given by uh, Professor David Poi. In our original plan, Professor Poi was invited to join Hong Kong U campus to host the lecture in this month. But due to the current situation, he has kindly agreed to deliver the lecture online without further delay, as the topic is very timely and relevant to our current situation on, and the concerns. So you are welcome to ask a question through uh, Zoom Q and A. You can check the button. Then um, in the Zoom webinar, you can find, okay? And the Professor Pei will answer the uh, questions after the lecture. Okay. Before the lecture starts, we are happy to have a uh, Professor uh, Christo Chow, the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, to give a short welcome address. Professor Chow, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chen. Uh, good morning to everyone uh, from uh, this part of the world, and uh, perhaps a uh, good evening to those uh, from uh, the US and other parts of the world. It is nice to meet with you all via the internet in this very difficult uh, situation. I hope everyone is good and uh, the outbreak of uh, the coronavirus is still uh, severe all over the world and uh, people are very eager to know how we can control the spread of the virus and of course uh, there are other issues related to uh, pollutants like uh, PM 2.5 so today we are very proud to have Professor David Pui, a world leading expert in this field, to deliver this online lecture. Professor David Pui is a Regents Professor and L. M. Fingerson, PSI Chair in Mechanical Engineering at the University of Minnesota. He is also a member of the US National Academy of Engineering and the Director of the University of Minnesota's Particle Technology Lab, one of the leading small particle research centers in the US, as well as the Center for Filtration Research, CFR. The CFR is regarded as the leading international center on air and water filtration with members from world leading companies such as 3M, Bowen, Samsung Electronics, uh, Professor Pui is a, a very famous scholar in industrial applications of aerosol technology. He developed several instruments for measuring and classifying aerosols, which are the basis for two ISO uh, standards. In fact, in our laboratories in the University of Hong Kong, we also have many instruments uh, that come from the invention uh, by uh, Professor Pui. David Pui is considered the world's leading expert in nanoparticle characterization and filtration technology of fine particles and is well known for his groundbreaking work on electrospraying and charging of aerosols. He not only shaped the academic world in the field of particle technology, but is also highly influential in commercializing his equipment, holding 40 patents. Without further ado, I shall pass the time to Professor Pui now and let's enjoy the lecture. Thank you and stay healthy. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dean Chow, uh, for your kind introduction. I'm very happy to share some of uh, my research of, of my group in Minnesota. Uh, so uh, uh, I will now uh, put my first slide on Okay, does it work that you see my first slide? Okay, so uh, my name is uh, David Pui. Uh, I'm affiliated uh, now with the University of Minnesota and also the Chinese University of Hong Kong, Shenzhen, uh, through a joint agreement between the two universities. Now, my Chinese name is Pui Yao Hong, Hong Kong, Zheng Dai. 我在香港讀小學、大學、小學和中學等間科培正 
，然後咧去美國嘅讀大學。So my talk is filtration solutions to mitigate coronavirus aerosol and PM 2.5 uh, pollutants. Now first, I like to um, uh, cite uh, the Landsat Commission's. Uh, it says pollution is the largest uh, environmental cause of diseases and premature death in the world today. Uh, an estimated uh, 9 million premature deaths, 16% uh, of all deaths uh, worldwide uh, caused by pollution. Now of this 9 million, 6 million uh, of that is caused by air pollution. Therefore, uh, I like to set the uh, research vision for my group uh, to develop green technology that benefits sustainable environment which will enable people and the environment to prosper together through number one, mitigating uh, PM 2.5 volatile organic carbons and ozone in the urban uh, environment. Second, reduce CO2 to mitigate global climate change. Uh, third, uh, to provide clean water to achieve water sustainability. And number four is what I just added uh, last few months which is to design, evaluate, and decontaminate respirators and masks to fight against uh, COVID-19. So this is the outline of my talk. I will first introduce Particle Technology Laboratory and the Center for Filtration Research. Then I will give uh, uh, two, uh, uh, talk, uh, two titles uh, on airborne viruses and uh, respirators, followed by another two topics uh, on mitigating uh, PM 2.5 in urban area and reducing CO2 for climate change uh, mitigation. So first, uh, the particle technology laboratory that I direct, uh, we are uh, developing a lot of uh, instruments that have been commercialized and used worldwide to measure particle size distribution. So here are a few examples of that. And uh, this instrument can be used to measure atmospheric particle size distribution uh, as a result of many years of uh, a measurement by particle lab faculty. We find that in the atmosphere, uh, the atmospheric aerosol consists of two modes. Uh, the uh, particle larger than uh, two and a half micron this coarse particle mode, uh, mostly from windblown dust and a larger size particle uh, of natural origin. And uh, less than two and a half micron uh, is called a fine particle mode and mostly uh, uh, comes from uh, man-made activity. So here's a little bit more detail. Uh, so this is two and a half micron, larger than two and a half micron particle are formed from crushing grinding uh, uh, and dust. So there's the wind blown dust and the uh, uh, particle comes from uh, uh, wind blown dust, uh, construction activity, uh, uh, agricultural activity. Now, because of their very large size, uh, they would uh, uh, settle very quickly. So their lifetime typically is only hours. So they rarely transport over a hundred kilometer, whereas smaller than two and a half micron, uh, the fine particles are from combustion gas to particle conversion. So they come from uh, power plant emissions, uh, diesel engine, gasoline engine. Now these particles are small, so they have a lifetime from days to weeks and can transport over thousands of kilometers. So uh, because of their, uh, they cause uh, visibility reduction and the health effect. So US uh, EPA uh, with the data uh, that uh, they review our data, uh, set up uh, a, a PM 2.5 standard. Uh, it is particulate matter that is two and a half micron in diameter and smaller. And the 24 hour standard is 35 microgram of particle mass per cubic meter of air and uh, annuals uh, average is 12 uh, microgram per cubic meter. So remember, 35 is for 24 hours and 12 is for annual average. 
so uh, we have also a center of uh, for filtration research CFR uh, in the uh, particle technology laboratory. It consists of uh, uh, 20 member companies and uh, uh, collectively they make 32 billion uh, dollars of annual sales and uh, uh, seven of them uh, plus the NIOSH, uh, which is an affiliated member, uh, they communicate with us uh, very closely during the last three months on COVID-19 uh, activities. Now, under the CFR, we have many uh, PhD uh, theses uh, uh, ongoing. And uh, before the student leave, I ask them to input their results, uh, uh, modeling results into a filter performance uh, modeling and uh, design uh, web website. Uh, our CFR company can uh, log on using a password, which will help them with designing composite filter, uh, optimizing filter performance, and extend filter life. So now let me uh, talk first about the uh, airborne viruses. Uh, uh, now the uh, virus aerosol uh, is defined as uh, assemblies of virus carrying solid particles or liquid droplets suspended in the gaseous medium. So the sources could be infected humans uh, during the coughing, sneezing, talking, even breathing. There could be uh, uh, virus carrying droplet coming out. In fact, during uh, sneezing and coughing, uh, there could be a uh, large uh, uh, density of uh, uh, from 80 micron to 30, 300 micron uh, large droplet spraying out uh, at uh, 50 to 100 miles per hour. So you can just imagine this large droplet can travel a few feet uh, before they start settling. And uh, uh, the study is important because uh, virus uh, cause respiratory uh, diseases. Now, uh, about five, six years ago, uh, one of my uh, former PhD student, Zili Zhuo, he did a study uh, using virus aerosol uh, to look at the uh, uh, filtration of uh, virus aerosol. And uh, he made use of uh, uh, bacteriophage and also some uh, animal uh, virus as a surrogate for human uh, viruses. And uh, you see that uh, bacteriophage is a single particle uh, by itself. However, for the animal viruses, uh, they are uh, typically uh, uh, is enveloped uh, and then with spikes uh, coming out. So coronavirus is uh, just like the other animal viruses that uh, is a envelope virus with uh, spikes coming out. Now the envelope is about 80 nanometer and the spikes is about 20 nanometer, so that the uh, uh, entire uh, coronavirus is about 120 nanometer or 0.12 uh, micron. And uh, so, but remember, uh, uh, rarely that the virus will be single particle because uh, they need a host uh, or mucus to keep them alive. So the way to evaluate the uh, penetration of virus aerosol through, through a respirator filter is to nebulize the viruses and then uh, measure the upstream and downstream uh, of the uh, filter uh, and then uh, look at the infectivity of those uh, sample. So what we are interested in uh, is to take a look uh, whether the physical penetration uh, can be used to predict infectivity penetration. So virus aerosol is to uh, uh, measure the infectivity pen penetration. Now physical penetration are used in uh, NIOSH standards and ASTM standards, which make use of salt particles and uh, oil particle uh, as a, a surrogate uh, for the uh, uh, virus particles. And we want to find out whether uh, this physical penetration can be used to predict uh, 
infectivity penetration. So one thing uh, we need to do first is to uh, uh, nebulize those uh, uh, virus uh, stock solution. Now, we first need to dilute them. So we don't want to use water because that's not uh, what happened when you cough out some of this droplet. Uh, they are mostly either mucus or saliva. So my PhD student, he volunteered to be the human subject to uh, 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 trying to uh, uh, use his uh, saliva for, for the experiment. So uh, he find that uh, uh, when he's working in front of the computer, he's, it's very difficult for him to uh, harvest the uh, uh, saliva. Whereas go to a theater or watching TV, then the saliva uh, come out very uh, fast. So this is the saliva in a beaker, and then he can then uh, uh, put a, a virus stock solution in it and uh, uranine and uh, antiform. And then this is then the suspension that he will nebulize uh, to uh, test the uh, 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 filter. So one thing he find is that when he spray the uh, uh, virus containing uh, drops, uh, so here, this is the MS2 bacteriophage. These three are the animal uh, 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 viruses uh, suspension uh, in, in the saliva suspension. And uh, you can see that when the particle size are small or the coating is, is less, uh, the uh, virus do not su survive uh, well. However, for the larger drops, uh, the, uh, the virus uh, uh, survive uh, pretty well. And uh, so uh, we feel that uh, uh, the su increased uh, survivability at 30 to uh, 300 to 400 nanometer is probably caused by a shooting effect. So then uh, Zili make use of this aerosol to challenge the respirator filter. And like I mentioned, measure upstream uh, concentration, downstream concentration, and then uh, look at uh, uh, the penetration of virus through the uh, uh, respirator. Uh, I can just uh, tell you the end result is that he found that the, uh, it's more difficult to pass a virus aerosol through the filter uh, compared with uh, uh, salt and oil uh, particles. So that uh, uh, making use of NIOSH uh, ASTM standard of using salt and oil particles is a conservative way of evaluating the filter efficiency because uh, uh, using actual virus, uh, the efficiency will even be higher because it's more difficult to pass them through a filter. So uh, Zili then uh, uh, published uh, uh, several uh, papers. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, this four paper become his, his chapter two, chapter three, chapter four and chapter five. And we, when he found the job uh, that he's ready to go or that he has to write an introduction and a summary and there he goes. So next uh, I'd like to talk about modeling uh, and the measurement of uh, uh, and decontamination of uh, uh, respirator uh, media. So uh, now this is a N95 uh, respirator this is a procedure mass, and then this is an industrial uh, 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 respirator, and this is a uh, forced air purifying respirator. So there are many different types of uh, respirator and mass. And sometimes I notice people are using uh, those two words uh, interchangeably. Actually, they are different. Respirators are like NIOSH N95, they are like this 3M respirator, and uh, it fit your face very, very well, very tight, uh, even around your nose, so that uh, there's no leakage of air th through the edge of the respirator. And so the overall efficiency is uh, greater than 95%. Now, whereas uh, uh, procedure masks and surgical masks, they are used to prevent large particle expelled by the, by the wearer, wearer, such as uh, uh, coughing, uh, those are large droplet. Uh, 
So it stopped those uh, large droplets from uh, reaching the patient. And in the surgery room, it will also stop the blood and body fluid uh, from uh, uh, getting into the wearer, which will be the doctor uh, mouth and nose. So those two are uh, uh, different. So uh, we should use the terminology uh, uh, according to uh, 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 this uh, explanation. Now, the, uh, this is procedure mass and uh, this is uh, a surgical mass. You can see that when you put it around your ear, there could be leakage uh, on the side. So why it is good to stop the large droplet, but uh, there could be leakage uh, on the side so that uh, if you have tiny particles, it can penetrate uh, into uh, the uh, inside of the mass. So uh, one of the PhD uh, students, Drew Thompson, did uh, electric uh, filtration modeling. And uh, for filter, you have a fiber with cross flow. Uh, and uh, so particle can be intercepted uh, by the fiber if it follow the streamline and uh, could be intercepted by the, by the uh, fiber. And it can also, uh, for particle with high inertia, it can deviate from the streamline and hit the fiber and be collected. Now for the very tiny uh, particles, Brownian motion will cause it to deviate from the streamline and eventually hit the fiber. Now for the uh, charged fiber, uh, the charge can uh, attract the particle whether it's charged or uncharged, uh, towards the fiber and be collected. Now, the, uh, uh, this is a uh, efficiency for a mechanical uh, filter. You see that uh, uh, efficiency is very high for small particles due to Brownian diffusion. And it reach a minimum and then come back up here due to interception and uh, inertia impaction. So, uh, if you have a, a charge uh, fiber, uh, you ended up with uh, uh, attraction uh, of the particle to the fiber. So that particularly for the larger size particle, uh, there's significantly increase uh, in the uh, 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 efficiency. And now the, uh, the fiber are very close. So the electric field is actually uh, quite high so that it could polarize the particle, even if, uh, if it is a neutral particles uncharged and be and collect them. Now, uh, the, um, uh, the electric media, just the blue uh, curve, can oftentimes combine with nanofiber layer, uh, the green curve, and then together they can make a very good, uh, highly efficient filter. And uh, so, this is uh, 0.05. This is penetration, one minus uh, efficiency. So it's an inverted uh, uh, V-shaped curve. And 0.05 is 95% efficient. So in general, if you have an electric media, if you can put more charge on the fiber, if you can make the fiber size smaller, and if you can pack the fiber closer together, it will make a highly efficient uh, filter for respirator and uh, you can relax a little bit uh, for the case of uh, uh, furnace filter and so on. In the modeling, uh, uh, we look at the uh, fiber uh, with the uh, cross flow uh, and then uh, particle velocity field uh, uh, is known. And then we can then inject the particle and following the particle trajectory uh, to see that it is captured by the uh, fiber. Now the traditional model uh, uh, include, now this is uh, penetration. So if you have one minus penetration, then you get a V-shaped curve efficiency. So uh, for uh, the purple curve, it is the uh, uh, diffusion, uh, uh, Brownian diffusion deposition, so that the uh, uh, smaller size particle has high efficient, lower pe uh, penetration, and large particle are collected by uh, interception and uh, impaction. Now the blue curve uh, is the uh, 
electric charge fiber uh, uh, collecting uh, uncharged particle and the red curve is to collect the charged particle. So columbic force can uh, cause the uh, blue curve and uh, uh, red curve uh, 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 collecting the particles. Now, however, we find that uh, uh, the uh, previous model do not consider the uh, uh, collection polarization of charge particle collection. So when we include the polarization of the charged particle, it makes the larger size particle uh, with uh, lower penetration, higher efficiency. Now, we uh, then uh, put the three curves together. The black uh, curve uh, in here uh, is the uh, 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 combination of uh, three different uh, curves together. And, uh, and the symbol is the experimental data. So you, you see that the new uh, model uh, agree very well with the experiment, whereas the old model failed to predict the uh, experimental results. So there are a lot of activities in electric filter uh, modeling uh, and uh, uh, measuring the filtration efficiency and the holding, dust holding capacity and so on. So uh, this Chen Chen Chen, Chen 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 is uh, Dr. Sean Chen, he was a postdoc in my lab and then become lab manager. He is now assistant professor at Virginia Commonwealth University. And then uh, 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 Drew Thompson uh, received his uh, PhD and now he is working at NIOSH. Actually NIOSH, uh, five of my former PhD and uh, uh, postdoc uh, working at NIOSH, including Deputy Director Scott Ernest, uh, he was my uh, former uh, PhD student. So uh, the next topic uh, is on decontamination of a respirator. As you know, uh, uh, respirator uh, is, uh, uh, the supply is getting uh, very limited. Uh, uh, New York just uh, announced that uh, all the people going outside need to wear uh, uh, procedural masks or uh, respirators so that uh, the supply is very limited. Now, if we can decontaminate, decontaminate the respirator mask and reuse it 10 times, it will then uh, reduce the need of uh, the uh, respirator and supply by a factor of 10. So, so we did uh, uh, the following uh, three decontamination method during the last uh, three weeks. This is uh, done by my uh, team uh, working as essential personnel in the lab. The lab, the lab is closed down, but they are essential personnel so that they are allowed to go in. And Dr. Qi Xing O, PhD student Chen Xing Pei, and uh, Dr. Sung Chang Kim. And the first study uh, is to put the mass. Uh, uh, in uh, on the rack hanging there, and then use a UV uh, system, uh, turn it on uh, so the UVC uh, light will uh, uh, irradiate the mass for five minutes. And uh, uh, its irradiation uh, is on both sides of the uh, mass. So uh, according to uh, many studies, that should be sufficient to kill the coronavirus. So another uh, uh, method that we really like to uh, uh, have the general public also have a method to do it at home. So this is uh, one approach we find that uh, would be a good one. Now in many studies, they find that if you can heat the uh, 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 sample uh, uh, up to uh, uh, one study is 56, another study 65 and 70 degrees C, the coronavirus will be killed. So what we suggest is that uh, uh, you can do it uh, at home using your oven. So uh, set your oven at 170 degree F or 77 degrees C, and then put your respirator mask on a coffee uh, filter uh, so that they don't touch the metal grill. And then uh, 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 let it sit in uh, this temperature for 30 minutes 
according to those three st study, it should be sufficient to kill the coronavirus. Now, after that, uh, we um, measure the fractional efficiency. Now, this is for 3M respirator. The green curve is untreated. And then the other three curves are treated by this three methods uh, for 10 times. You see that there's no decrease in the uh, filtration efficiency, still above uh, 95%. So uh, this uh, method uh, uh, is good for the general public to use. So, so that's uh, all that I will talk about the um, uh, re uh, respirator. So next topic, I like to go on to talk about uh, uh, mitigating PM 2.5 in urban environment and then followed by CO2. Uh, so now the, um, we, we have done a lot of fundamental research on uh, PM 2.5, uh, uh, but uh, here I will just go directly into applied research. So we have developed a indoor air cleaner for local control. Uh, we have developed a, a gasoline particulate filter for source control. Uh, we have developed a solar assisted large scale air cleaning system, SALSCS, so that sources uh, for urban area control. And then we have also written a paper of using a uh, great wall of solar panels to uh, uh, mitigate a yellow dust storm. So you would agree that if we are successful in uh, doing all of this, it will create a sustainable environment for the world. So this is uh, a, a PM 2.5 uh, satellite uh, uh, derived uh, uh, map uh, uh, showing that uh, in Northern China, uh, the PM 2.5 is very high. It's improving a great deal in the last uh, few years. And Northern uh, Thailand and also uh, India in particular is uh, getting uh, to be very uh, uh, in a, a crisis mode. Uh, uh, World Health Organization uh, indicated that at least 140 million people in India are breathing air 10 times or more uh, over the uh, WHO safe limit. So its uh, uh, situation is quite bad. Now, uh, for PM 2.5, uh, one of the first thing uh, you will notice is visibility reduction. So uh, this is my group. Uh, that went to uh, Sajiazhuang uh, two years ago. Uh, that day, CNN said that uh, Sajiazhuang is the uh, most polluted city in the world. <laughs> this is in a railroad station. And then there are buildings across the street, but you can hardly see it. And we are all wearing uh, uh, N95 uh, respirator, which is a good thing because uh, if we wear uh, just uh, procedure masks, a lot of uh, small particle can penetrate in. So another effect is a uh, health effect, which is uh, a lot more serious. Uh, the landmark study is done by Harvard Six, six City study during the 1970s and 80s. They pick six medium sized US city and plotting the PM concentration uh, 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 as a function of mort mortality rate ratio. They said, P, Portage, Wisconsin to be one. You can see that uh, uh, when the PM 2.5 increased from uh, 12 to 30, the death rate increased by 30%. Now in Beijing, uh, it has reduced from 80 to 60, so it's around here. And then in India, it's about 100, so it's way, way up there. So this is a very serious, uh, so we need to really try to control uh, PM 2.5. Uh, uh, remember earlier I mentioned that uh, Landsec uh, uh, mentioned that uh, uh, 4 million people around the world die of uh, uh, PM 2.5 uh, air pollution every year. So 
compared with the coronavirus death is much higher and it happens every year. So we really need to pay attention to help save life uh, by reducing PM2.5. I should also mention that uh, uh, I checked uh, uh, two years ago, all the city uh, PM2.5 is now below 12 microgram per cubic meter, the P EPA standard. So just imagine how many people uh, life are safe uh, due to the PM2.5 standard. Now, China has done uh, a great deal of work. In fact, uh, in uh, uh, December of 2013, uh, uh, they published a paper uh, in Landsat that uh, 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 China implement a national action plan that will require the government to spend at least 280 billion US dollars over five years period to control uh, PM 2.5. Uh, a lot of this money go to uh, uh, clean uh, coal technology and making use of uh, uh, natural gas in place of coal burning. Uh, in fact, in Sajazhang, they not only use natural gas for power plant, they actually pipe it all the way to the village so that the villager can use natural gas to warm their home instead of burning coal. So you can see that CNN uh, uh, indicated that China has saved hundreds of thousands of lives by reducing air pollution. Now in India, situation is getting quite bad. Uh, in fact, uh, I grabbed this uh, uh, December 11th, uh, just uh, four months ago. Uh, uh, in Delhi, the uh, air quality AQI index is 707 and PM 2.5 is 504. Now the Delhi chief minister called the region a gas chamber. So now help is on the way. Uh, uh, here is the Times of India indicating that they would like to build an uh, anti-smog tower like what we did uh, in Xi'an uh, so that uh, uh, to help to reduce the uh, pollution. So they talk about uh, University of Minnesota working with uh, IIT Delhi and Bombay uh, to build this tower. So now let me tell you what the sources is about. So it is a uh, thing of it is a very large uh, greenhouse uh, and uh, so the sunlight can go through the glass panel heating the ground and the air uh, below the glass panel and uh, now when uh, the air warm up it will uh, rise due to buoyancy and the glass plate is sl slanting a little bit uh, higher uh, in the middle so that the air rush to the middle and before they exit uh, through this tower we put in a filter system uh, to remove all the particles so only only the clean air come out. Now this giant uh, sources uh, can provide a, a updraft airflow of uh, 260,000 cubic meter per second or like 1 billion cubic meter per hour. So look at all this clean air. Now uh, here is a simulation of putting eight of those giant sources around Beijing Basin out of uh, uh, outside of six ring row. You see the clean air flooding the basin and we uh, you know numer numerical calculations show that 15% uh, of the air pollution can be reduced over 24 to 36 hour. Now Xi'an is the first uh, city to build a pilot unit. Uh, now it's quite a bit smaller, but still uh, it's 60 meter high, the tower. And you see the slender glass towards the uh, middle. And uh, there's four part uh, of the tower. Each uh, is divided by a divider and uh, uh, one side we installed 3M electric media, one side Donaldson company uh, a glass fiber filter, and then the third side a domestic uh, filter media. And uh, <coughs> uh, another PhD student, he did uh, a detailed numerical uh, study uh, and uh, uh, 
the uh, his modeling results is, is in red color. This is, is the flow rate on all the different sides. And, and the blue one is what he measured. Uh, and you see that there's a very good agreement between modeling result and measurement. Now, there are two areas uh, which uh, disagree. Uh, it, it, both areas are on the north side. Uh, the reason is that uh, the sun is always uh, uh, a little bit on the south side so that uh, the tower will cast a shadow on the north side so the north side uh, do not receive as much solar energy therefore the flow rate is lower. And uh, so uh, this has been operated for the last two years and uh, so this is where the sources is located in Xi'an. This is the reference uh, point. And then there are measurements around the sources. Uh, uh, most of them are downwind. The wind is blowing uh, from uh, north to the south. And then there are two stations, which is uh, uh, upstream of the wind. So now the red bar is the reference uh, 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 PM concentration at the reference point. Uh, and this one is before the clean air is turned on. When you turn on the clean air, low uh, most of the area experience a drop in the PM concentration. Uh, these two are related to the upstream uh, one. Uh, so uh, approximately 12% reduction experience in this area. Now one of the professor, uh, uh, Chen Ji, uh, he, he uh, uh, worked with a group uh, of uh, uh, people in Xi'an and uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong University in Fudan. And then uh, they went to Xi'an to look at the real estate value surrounding the sources. What they found is that uh, uh, this is the control group and this is the purification group. Uh, the purification uh, group, uh, they are willing to pay four and a half percent higher in real estate of price. Uh, in order to breathe clean air. Now this is very good news because just imagine uh, the value of real estate uh, in China, in Hong Kong, and four and a half uh, percent increase represent a lot of money, uh, uh, maybe a hundred times or a thousand times uh, more than putting a tower there. So it makes it feasible and uh, hopefully uh, some real estate people uh, will realize uh, uh, that they can add value to their properties by installing such a tower. So this tower attracted uh, attention from all over the world and over 1,000 uh, visitors went there. Uh, and uh, uh, Money Magazine uh, last year uh, named uh, this uh, Xi'an sources as one of the 28 incredible made in China innovations that are changing the world. Now, the second generation sources uh, was installed in uh, Yancheng in Jiangsu province. And here uh, we are replacing the uh, cement tower with a, a glass tower and hanging L, uh, L, LED outside so that we can show commercial and make some money uh, to uh, uh, for the operating cost of the unit. Uh, and uh, so actually the uh, annual report of the chief medical officer of the uh, United Kingdom uh, published in chapter one, an example of how uh, this type of uh, concept can be used to remove PM 2.5. And uh, last March, I was invited to give a Diamond Jubilee Distinguished Lecture at IIT Bombay. And uh, afterwards, they took me to visit with chairman of the Central Pollution Control Board, just like US uh, EPA. And the uh, chairman told me that Supreme uh, Court ordered the Indian government to reduce PM 2.5 by 30% in five years. So he think that urgent uh, uh, action need to be taken. So. Currently, our team is working with IIT Bombay and Tata Engineering to install a unit in Delhi for the next smog season. Now, with coronavirus, 
India's lockdown as well. So we don't know uh, when we can go back to work uh, on this uh, uh, sources for India. So for the India sources, we decided to have uh, the third generation sources in here. We reverse the flow. So the clean air coming out from the bottom. Now uh, with the uh, clean air coming from the top, uh, you are at the mercy of the wind because it will blow the clean air wherever they wish to blow. Uh, whereas so uh, with clean air coming from the bottom, uh, we can, uh, you now this is uh, done by installing fan to blow the air out. Of course, we can put some uh, solar panel on top to uh, facilitate uh, uh, the electricity for the fan. Uh, now when a, a clean air come out from the bottom, then it would definite, uh, definitely benefit the residents uh, surrounding the sources. So uh, uh, my student, uh, Ching Fung Chao, he did uh, modeling as part of his PhD thesis of uh, having uh, the sources sitting in here and a strip of air pollution emission in here, uh, like a freeway uh, uh, exhaust blowing uh, uh, in this direction. And he wanted to take a look to see the effectiveness of the clean air uh, from the sources. So this is uh, using large eddy simulation. And uh, uh, this is where the sources is located. And the uh, sources is not on, uh, on at 500 cubic meter per second, 1,000 feet per second. And then uh, the top three bars are uh, for the contour air pollution below three meter height, uh, two meter height. And the bottom is uh, between two meter to four meter height. So you can see the clean air uh, cover a quite a large area downstream. Uh, and uh, so uh, what he found is that uh, uh, in the downwind location, particularly uh, the uh, air pollution can be reduced by 75%. Uh, this is for 500 uh, cubic meter per second to 83%, 1000 cubic meter per second. And uh, uh, also uh, in India, there are many uh, compact uh, building uh, uh, in the location. So we simulate that by placing uh, many uh, building height of 64 meter surrounded the, surrounding the tower. And uh, still you see that the in a downwind location, 56% reduction in PM 2.5, 55% reduction in PM 2.5. So this is uh, for the case of uh, uh, calm air. And uh, uh, Ching Feng found that uh, the uh, uh, up to 40 meter uh, can achieve 80% uh, uh, reduction, 75% uh, in 80 meter. Uh, 700 uh, meter away, uh, reduction 65%, even one kilometer, 50% reduction. So uh, we feel that uh, this is uh, something that uh, will be very useful uh, to the Delhi area. Uh, now, Ching Feng again wrote uh, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five. And then when he's done, he put in a, uh, introduction and summary and uh, finish his PhD thesis. Now he is a postdoc in my lab. So uh, next I'd like to uh, talk about uh, uh, using sources to reduce CO2 for climate uh, change uh, mitigation. Now we all know that uh, uh, the greenhouse gas, uh, 80 some percent, uh, 80 some percent is the CO2. Uh, it can, uh, uh, climate change can cause temperature to rise, sea level to rise, hydrological extremes of droughts, floods, and uh, fires. And health effect uh, is uh, heat stress, heart attack, respiratory disease, uh, malaria, cholera, malnutrition, and large scale migration. So it costs a lot more to uh, fix the health effects uh, than uh, by removing the CO2 from the air. So we uh, decided to uh, uh, use uh, the second generation sources 
uh, to remove CO2. Now this is uh, uh, done because uh, in the second generation sources, we make use of water spray uh, to spray large droplet to scrub out the uh, PM 2.5. However, uh, we can also put uh, sodium hydroxide into the water and spray it. Uh, the resulting sodium hydroxide drops can uh, uh, absorb the uh, CO2 uh, and the uh, uh, sodium carbonate uh, can then be going to a area that uh, uh, CO2 can be separated uh, out and then uh, I'll tell you what to do with the CO2 but then the sodium hydroxide can continue recirculating and reuse uh, for spraying. Now this uh, approach of using sodium hydroxide droplet uh, or actually the sodium hydroxide to absorb the CO2 uh, has been promoted by American Chemical Society but then they are using a uh, contact column uh, that uh, drip the sodium hydroxide solution in the contact column and there they need to blow uh, a large amount of uh, atmospheric air towards the contact column so that it costs a lot of electricity to blow a lot of air towards the contact column so you imagine uh, this farm is one kilometer by one kilometer so a lot of electricity so finally in the economic study they decided that it's too expensive uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, the economically unfeasible however our giant sources uh, we don't use electricity we just use solar energy to move uh, one billion cubic meter of air uh, per hour uh, towards uh, uh, the uh, uh, sources uh, so uh, the uh, uh, it costs only uh, a fraction uh, maybe 10 percent of the cost of uh, running this APA as unit so that is economically feasible to do that so what do you do with the CO2 separated uh, now my colleague uh, Professor Tom Keane and his PhD student they work on a DOE project uh, that they look at the idea of pumping the CO2 all the way down to five to seven kilometer uh, below ground. Uh, now the, uh, the water uh, uh, is typically uh, around here. Uh, uh, and uh, so uh, down uh, seven kilometer below, uh, there are a lot of hot rocks that can heat up the CO2. and uh, the hot CO2 is brought back up to turn a uh, turbine to generate electricity when it cool off, then it can drop back down uh, to the cavern. So now uh, DOE also look at uh, 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 some of the location in the US that can uh, locate the injection well to pump the CO2 down. There's a 16 gigaton uh, gigaton of CO2 that can be stored uh, in here. So, so this is a, a feasible approach of uh, uh, storing and making use of the CO2. So uh, now uh, I gave uh, a, a talk similar uh, on CO2 and PM2.5 removal uh, in a joint uh, meeting of AGU and uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences in in Xi'an. So this group went to visit the uh, sources in Xi'an. Now in particular, this one with the head, uh, is James Hansen. Professor Hansen is one of the pioneer in climate uh, change uh, uh, topic. And uh, he actually introduced my plenary talk. And afterwards, he said that he's, uh, he think that this is a feasible approach. He liked it. So it's uh, good that uh, a pioneer thought that uh, this is not a dumb idea. So in conclusion, I'd like to say that we have performed fundamental ap applied research towards developing green technology to mitigate PM2.5 and airborne viruses, purifying the clean water, reducing CO2 in the atmosphere. Our goal is to uh, create a sustainable environment which will enable people and the environment to prosper together. So 
I will stop here now and uh, uh, oh, actually uh, here I want to show show this to you. Uh, this is a uh, uh, forbidden city in a very uh, 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 hasty uh, PM 2.5 environment. So I like to superimpose this uh, uh, gears and uh, uh, and 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 the uh, wheel in here. Uh, now, what I like to see is academia, government, and industry each representing by a gear to collaborate together. Academia can identify the source and the effect, and government can set regulation, and then industry can provide novel technology to reduce the source. So, what we like to see is the three gear working together, rotating in the same direction, same speed. And uh, you see that it's, it's working, and then the wheel is turning, and then the source is reduced. Aha, you see that the pollution is gone. So uh, uh, it works. Now, uh, some people ask me, what is this middle, middle gear? Actually, this is a very important gear in mechanical engineering. It's called the sun gear. This three called the planet gear. Without the sun gear, you see that this may turn clockwise, clockwise. This one will be turning counterclockwise. So the three gear will lock up. You cannot move anything. So what is this uh, sun gear? It's uh, uh, Dean uh, Chow, uh, uh, Dr. Chen, uh, all the audience uh, here, and myself, uh, basically the general public. We encourage the three sector to work together to help to mitigate uh, PM 2.5, particularly for CO2, because it will involve a lot of money. Only government can afford to do it. So at this time, I'd like to uh, stop and uh, answer any question that you may have. Uh, did I go over time? Mm. Sorry. <laughs> No, there are some questions. Uh, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Where the professor can see the questions? Okay. There's a question one. Is the MERV 13 or MERV 14 filter effective in filtering the coronavirus? Professor Pui? Uh, uh, Okay, uh, what is the question? Uh, I need to uh, show the slide again. Oh, I, I need to get out of, of the screen in here. So can you just tell me what is it about? Can you ask the question? Uh, okay, Professor Pei. So first question is, uh, is MERV 13 or MERV 14 filter effective in filtering the coronavirus? Okay, so I need to uh, go to the slide, right? Slide. Okay. Are you talking about the, the, let's see. Are you talking about a uh, slice like this? Now, I should mention that the coronavirus by itself is about 0.12 micron, 120 nanometer. So you can see that for this filter, uh, it has 98% uh, filtration efficiency. So 98% of the coronavirus by itself uh, will be removed by the respirator filter. Now, uh, actually for the larger droplet, uh, larger than one 10 micron, the efficiency will even be higher because of the impaction uh, of the droplet on the fil filter. So, 
So this is, uh, uh, is that uh, what uh, the question is about? <clears throat> Basically, it's a MERV 13 or MERV 14, what they are about. Oh, MERV 13 and 14. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think that uh, uh, you should take a look at the filtration efficiency. If it is uh, higher than 95%, then uh, it, it will work. Uh, uh, and uh, so a lot of the MERV uh, filters are used in furnace filter. And what we found is that uh, uh, if you put uh, three to four layers of the furnace filter together, uh, it can create uh, a uh, filter efficiency uh, uh, nearly as good as uh, the N95 uh, media, uh, which is greater than 95%. So if you put uh, three, four layer of the furnace filter together. Okay, okay, thank you. <clears throat> so second question is uh, mentioned is, uh, any work on desalination? So I don't, I don't know whether it's uh, <clears throat> related to your work or not. The second question is, any work on desalination? Uh, let's see, let me stop sharing in here. Okay, so, sorry, I don't know how to stop share. So, okay. Yeah. So, uh, what was the question again? Any work on desalination? So it's uh, about the desalination. I don't know why I ask uh, this question because this is a uh, related to the desalination. A uh, decontamination? No, desalination. Incineration. Anyway, this is uh, related to the, maybe it's related to the, uh, uh, to get the water from the seawater, this desalination. Mm. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, distillation of seawater. Yeah. Okay. So we, we do uh, uh, membrane filtration uh, in our group, uh, although we are not expert in the uh, uh, liquid filtration, but uh, we have a very good student uh, who is now uh, back in Korea. He uh, did his PhD and wrote, wrote uh, 10 papers on liquid filtration. So uh, membrane filters are used for liquid uh, uh, filtration and uh, it's very complicated uh, because you have chemistry involved and uh, uh, so, um, so we are still learning. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The third question, Professor Pei, is about the NO2 or NOx uh, atmospheric pollutants caused by vehicles. Are there effective filtration technology that can remove or minimize NO2 or NOx? So, yes. Uh, uh, you notice that uh, uh, several of our com uh, CFR company, such as uh, BASF, uh, they are catalyst company, and then uh, there are a couple of automobile companies, uh, Cummins and uh, 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 Huayuan, uh, so on. They are quite interested uh, in uh, using wash coating on a wall filter uh, to uh, uh, remove uh, NOx, uh, and uh, so we are working with them on that. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, what we found, uh, I, I don't have time to present, is that uh, uh, we can put a, a membrane a layer on top of the wall filter uh, to prevent uh, uh, the uh, uh, wash coating from uh, uh, getting uh, uh, the soot particle go in and uh, 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 cause the uh, deterioration of the wash uh, coating. So this is uh, ongoing research. Okay, thank you. So next question is, uh, 
about uh, do you think uh, wearable devices sending negative charge to the air can protect coronavirus 19? You, uh, you are saying, uh, what if we spray some iron uh, to the atmosphere, right? Whether it will be helpful? Wearable devices, wearable devices sending negative charge to the air can protect the coronavirus 19. Uh, so it's a device to produce charge. To produce a negative charge. Negative charge. Mm -hmm. Or sending and, negative uh, charge to the air can protect the coronavirus 19. Yeah, I, I haven't heard about that. But uh, uh, people have used uh, ions uh, uh, on the runway uh, during a very foggy uh, uh, environment on a runway, if you were to uh, use a corona discharge device to generate high concentration of one polarity uh, negative uh, ions, for example, and uh, uh, it will charge up the droplet. And when the droplet is charged up, they will expel each other and uh, the fog would then disperse. I wonder if the uh, the question, the person that asked the question is referring to, to dispersing the uh, coronavirus uh, using a charge. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So maybe ne let's move to the next question. So what is the possibility and the probability that the coronavirus 19 can be spread by airborne mechanism? So to your understanding, what is the possibility and the pro probability that the coronavirus 19 can be spread by airborne magnetism. Yes, uh, it's definitely possible, but that's why we need to wear uh, face masks. Uh, this is to prevent uh, people coughing out, uh, like I mentioned, uh, during coughing and sneezing. Uh, droplet containing coronavirus uh, can spray out at uh, up to 100 miles per hour. So it can project uh, uh, for several feet. So if you are standing uh, uh, in front of this person without wearing a mask, then it will mm -hmm. hit your face and, and you can breathe in the coronavirus. So this is uh, one reason why it's important to wear uh, uh, mask and respirator in a uh, uh, crowded uh, uh, area. Okay, thank you. So now next question is, does the tower work on the uh, cloudy day? You mentioned the tower in, in Xi'an. So whether the tower will work in, in cloudy day? Cloudy day. The oh, tower. in cloudy day. I, I should yeah. mention that uh, uh, below the uh, glass uh, panel, uh, there are stones that absorb the uh, heat uh, during the daytime. And actually, even in the night time, the tower is still operating at half of the flow rate because uh, the stone uh, store solar energy and uh, warm up the air uh, even during the night time. So we found that uh, at the night time, there's still uh, maybe 50% of the flow uh, uh, blowing through the tower. Okay, thank you. So let's move to the next question. So I think is uh, uh, yeah. So this is related to your uh, talk. How the survivability, survivability is calculated for the virus in aerosol particles. The bar chart to in, in your talk, bar chart. How the viable virus numbers is acquired. The equipment, PCR or SKC or other instrument. So this is related to your work. So how the survivability survivability is calculated for the virus in aerosol particles. Okay, you mean how do we measure that? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, okay. how the, the bar chart, you, in your talk, you have a bar chart, show that. So how did you get the data? Yeah, yeah. So it's a very, very <laughs> uh, tedious uh, work. Uh, so uh, remember I told you that uh, we use uh, uh, a uh, sampler uh, uh, 
gelatin filled with gelatin filter or using an impinger to collect the uh, uh, infectious uh, virus. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, we will uh, uh, pour it on the auger plate and uh, uh, bake it for uh, uh, one and a half days. And afterwards, uh, look at the auger plate. Uh, what happened is that the uh, uh, in the auger plate, uh, uh, the virus uh, uh, is incorporated with some cells uh, like E. coli, and then uh, the cells will grow into a colony. But then you look at each of those uh, colony, uh, those uh, 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 colony in the middle, there's a hole. Uh, is caused by the virus attacking the cells and the cell die. Uh, so you look for black dot with a hole and those are the infectious uh, 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 those uh, colony has virus that uh, kill the uh, host uh, cell. And so it's a very tedious technique. You have to dilute, dilute, dilute the uh, collected sample and then pour it on the auger plate and then uh, do this uh, uh, incubation and then count it afterwards. And uh, in the animal cells, uh, uh, the student uh, uh, is even more difficult because you, you grow uh, some cells on the bottom of uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, well and then uh, so that the, the cells uh, would then uh, grow into a monolayer. Then you pour the uh, virus uh, suspension over it. And then again, you rely on the uh, microscope to look at the, some, some of the sick cell that are attacked by virus. And then you dilute, dilute, dilute and make the measurement. So it's a very, and then for that, it's even worse. You need to bake it for four and a half days before uh, you can uh, uh, count them. So, so uh, we uh, work with a vet medicine professor so that uh, uh, the technique we learn from them. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So now we have a, a, about four questions uh, remaining. Okay, so quickly, um, the next question is about the uh, the capture CO2. So you mentioned that you are, you are new techn uh, you are techn technology to capture CO2. So what control distribution of alkali droplets to manage the risk of injury from inhalation of them? So the CO2, uh, can you repeat? Uh, so, so it's uh, with the with the NaOH brain to control CO2, what control distribution for alkali droplets to manage the risk of injury from inhalation of them? Oh, okay. Okay, so you worry that uh, uh, some of the uh, droplets may be inhaled, right? Mm -hmm. So now I should mention that those drops are actually quite big. Uh, those are, uh, uh, like uh, tens of micron, so they fall very fast. Uh, mm. A uh, 100 micron uh, fall at uh, one uh, foot per second. So just imagine, uh, so they fall uh, down very fast and they go into uh, below the uh, spray sprayer. We have a uh, 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 channel to direct the uh, liquid uh, away to a uh, utility room that we can process the liquid. Uh, in the case of PM 2.5, we use a liquid filter to remove the uh, uh, PM 2.5 and then recirculate the spray water. Uh, similarly okay. for sodium hydroxide, we can do the same thing too. And uh, the droplet will be big so that it uh, falls very quickly uh, to the uh, ground and into the channel. 
and direct uh, way to the utility room. Okay, thank you. So let's quickly move to the next one. Okay, <laughs> okay. So because we have uh, uh, four questions remaining, but uh, we only have uh, limited time. So I will ask you some interesting uh, questions uh, some of you are asked. So baked the mask can kill the coronavirus 19. Can we do it at home now? <laughs> so you mentioned that. So baked yeah. the mask can kill the coronavirus. Yes, so people are wondering, can we do it in home? <laughs> yeah, that's our intention. Uh, you know, the UVGI using UV light uh, can be done in the hospital at home. We don't have a UV source so easily. So we suggest that uh, uh, the general public, they can put the mass inside the oven, set it at uh, 77 degrees C for 30 minutes and bring it out and uh, that's decontaminated. And we so test the efficiency has not changed. So it doesn't damage the filter. So thank you. So because we're short of time, so we cannot uh, finish the remaining three questions. So uh, I will wrap up this uh, uh, really long uh, lecture. I believe this is a, a first ever online really long lecture in our department, but it is quite uh, successful. We checked more than 130 attendants. So thank you. And uh, uh, any any further words from uh, Dean, Professor Chow? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, Professor Pui's uh, wonderful talk. I um, noticed that there is uh, one question uh, that may actually uh, be interested in, uh, you know, among the uh, audience, uh, which is a uh, very uh, fund fundamental question in, in aerosol uh, physics. Uh, perhaps uh, we can also look at that before we uh, dismiss, uh, you know, uh, this uh, lecture. Because uh, I'm also, uh, you know, in this area, many uh, people ask these questions. If so you look I, at the, um, all night. So this if you look at the uh, filter uh, efficiency uh, curve, um, very small particles. All right, they uh, have uh, pretty good uh, filtration efficiency. So this is uh, due to uh, Brownian uh, diffusion, right? And very big uh, particles they are removed by. Uh, impaction and interception. Yes. So I think the most uh, difficult one will be those uh, in the intermediate uh, size range. Yes. If I understand uh, correctly, perhaps like 0.1 uh, micron, you know. Uh, 0.1 to 0.3. Something like that, right? We so uh, most penetrating particle size. Exactly. So if I look at your uh, figures, it seems that, you know, adding a uh, charging uh, mechanism through uh, electrification perhaps can, can uh, improve a bit the efficiency in this uh, intermediate uh, size uh, range. Is yeah. it a, a, a good direction to uh, pursue uh, further or any other uh, Novel technology we can use to improve the intermediate size range aerosol uh, capture. Yeah, so in most of the uh, fibrous uh, filter media like HEPA filter, uh, there's a minimum efficiency between 0.1 to 0.3. So we call it the most penetrating particle size range. Now for electric media, uh, the most penetrating size range is actually smaller in 10 to uh, 30 nanometer particle size range. So the efficiency uh, in the 0.1 micron coronavirus diameter uh, uh, range is uh, higher uh, than the HEPA filter. So, so uh, depending on uh, how you uh, want to uh, use the filter, like I show you a slide of uh, mixing uh, charge fiber with uh, uh, nanofiber, uh, it, it uh, uh, nanofiber gives you uh, 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 
better re, uh, I mean, on the, uh, is, yeah, I, I think that's a graph that I show you that uh, uh, nanofiber uh, can help you with one size range and then the uh, uh, electric uh, help you in another size range. So together, they make a very good filter. So the filter technology is there. So uh, uh, we can model the uh, uh, filter performance uh, uh, using a variety of tools that we have developed. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think uh, this is a uh, gorgeous uh, presentation. And as uh, Dr. Chen just mentioned, this is the first time that uh, we use, uh, you know, uh, Shum to uh, organize a William Mung uh, Distinguished uh, Lecture. I believe that in the coming months, we will may be doing uh, more uh, this type of uh, virtual uh, talk or seminars or conferences. Uh, but this is a great uh, kickoff. Thank you so much. And uh, I would like to uh, end this uh, lecture. Thank you so much, okay? Yeah, yeah, I, I should also mention that uh... Uh, in your original invitation, you also asked me to talk to the graduate student, uh, uh, to to the graduate students. So I owe you a talk with the graduate student. I hope that in the fall, I may come to uh, uh, Hong Kong U and uh, uh, complete my uh, the rest of my commitment to to you. Yeah, no problem. So, this is what we are uh, looking forward uh, to uh, seeing it uh, happen. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for your invitation, and I look forward to visiting you in person uh, during the fall. Okay, great. Yeah. Good night. Good night.